So here I just want to quickly talk about five quick tips for being productive, whether it's uh, at the university as a student, which is uh, obviously what I mainly talk about in this channel, uh, or professionally, uh, which is based on, on my professional work. So all these experiences, all these tips are based on my experiences first as a student and then as a business owner and somebody who works independently. So number one is to understand your preferences, understand your, your body when you are most effective. This is very, very important. As you know, there are, for example, people who enjoy studying at night, late at night. I always knew lots of such people. I felt like there is more of these people than there are of uh, the opposite. Uh, but th there are also people who prefer to work in the morning or study in the morning, including myself. So, uh, so that's the first thing. You have to under understand your patterns. You have to, have to understand when uh, what time of the day you are most productive, but also what kind of tasks perhaps uh, you enjoy doing and what kind of tasks you are most or best at or most productive at, at what time. So again, uh, in my work, for example, I do all kinds of things. Uh, there are so many things involved you can imagine in running a business and, and being a consultant and a data analyst. Uh, I do analyze the data, I do have uh, calls, video calls and conferences with people and, and clients and, uh, and people who collaborate with me. Uh, I do, of course, record these videos and, and plan uh, these videos first and uh, lots and lots of other things. Of course, I keep an eye on my social media, I, I have to uh, develop and design my website, respond to comments and all kinds of things. And uh, and in time, with time, gradually, I had to understand which ones to do when, basically. I always I have uh, uh, not too much free time uh, because I also have lots of other things and I, and I, of course, want to spend time with my family. Uh, so I had to learn and understand when, how to maximize my effectiveness. So, so which tasks to do when? This is very important. When I'm at my best, when I'm, for example, the most effective and productive uh, time of the, of the day, I don't want to be, let's say, planning content of my videos or responding to comments because I believe that this, uh, at this time I want to be doing, let's say, data analysis, which is the most uh, demanding, the, mo uh, the most you know, cognitively demanding task. So I want to make sure that I do this uh, perfectly. If I have some writing, I also write reports. So again, this is something I know I really have to be good at. So this is always being prioritized. So if I have to write a report and do some data analysis, data analysis for me is kind of a, uh, at the moment, a little bit more natural, <laughs> if, if you believe it or not, uh, than, for example, writing a report. So again, writing a report will always be uh, prioritized if I know that, for example, I have two hours in the morning when I, I, I have uh, time to do this and there is nobody, no distraction. So, so that's how I decide. You have to learn that for yourself as well and then leave the tasks which perhaps are less demanding or just easier or as I explain in a second, you can perhaps do them somewhere else on the way to university. Leave the task, these tasks for later. The second one is to get plenty of sleep and rest. And this is again, it may sound obvious, but it's not. And it's something I very often talk and I spoken about this uh, on several occasions and in my other videos and my social media. So you do have to rest. Sometimes you may feel like uh, there is no time to rest, but this is not true. This is ridiculous and there is always time to rest because if you don't do that now, if you don't rest and you work, let's say, five days straight or seven days without any rest, believe me, on your fifth and sixth and seventh day, you simply won't be as productive as you would be if you got some rest on the third day or, or even took a day off on the third day. Again, this relates to both you know, professional uh, things and professionals, professional lifestyle and to students. So you do have to rest. I have a separate video just about the importance of resting and taking breaks. Uh, and of course, this uh, also leads us to sleep. You do want to, to have plenty of sleep and, and kind of this also uh, links back to what I said before, understanding your body. So you have to understand when uh, is the best time to sleep. And I'm not saying you want to sleep throughout the day, but, but rather what time you want to go to bed, what time you want to get up, because it's not always the same. It's not always enough to just, let's say, get eight hours of sleep, because for some people sleeping 
from midnight to 8 a.m. is better than sleeping from 10 p.m. to uh, uh, to 6 a.m. for example. So you do have to understand your body for that as well. But but regardless, getting sleep and rest is super important. The next one is planning and setting deadlines. So again, importance of planning cannot be overstated. I've uh, talked about this many, many times and everything I do, everything I did as a student was based on very thorough and very detailed planning. So that's, uh, I advise you to watch the other videos as well, but generally you do want to plan everything, especially the larger tasks, uh, such as finish your dissertation, or if you're a professional uh, like myself, the tasks for this year, I have my goals for this year, what I want to achieve, how many courses I want to record, uh, and, and other things or some business ideas. So especially with longer term plans, it's very important, as I explained in these other videos, to, uh, to have a very detailed plan to start ideally at the end and start breaking down each step towards now, towards today. So if you're planning to graduate in six months, start with that graduation in six months and start working backwards. So, so what do you need to do a month before that? If you need to send your dissertation to a proofreader or your supervisors, and then before that you need to finish conclusion and before that, so start moving backwards. That's usually what I do with these long-term plans. Like I said, I have a separate video in which I uh, just talk about this, but, uh, but this is just one aspect of planning, but then you want to be planning your months and your weeks. Uh, very often I plan my days as well. So this again takes us back to what I said at the beginning, understanding the different times of the day and try, trying to make sure that you allocate the most uh, important or difficult tasks to the time when you are most productive. So you do have to plan uh, days and weeks as well. And this really helps you be on top of things. It really helps you see your progress. It helps you understand where you are and when to start to panic and when to start to worry. It also works uh, really well uh, in this psychological way, I would say, where ticking off uh, the things that you have completed, the tasks that you have completed, also helps you feel that you've done enough, that you've done what you plan to do. And finally, what it helps uh, with, especially for those of you who really don't know when to stop, and it's kind of what I'm struggling with, so I'm kind of a workaholic and, and I often feel like I haven't done enough. So if I, if I completed my tasks earlier than I thought I would, I usually start looking for something else or start feeling guilty, guilty that I'm, I'm supposed to be working and doing something. But if you have that plan and you're ticking things off and you just kind of have your, all, uh, your own rule saying that you're only doing things on the list, you're always completing the things on the list, so you're not gonna go uh, to the pub before you ticked every single thing off that list. But in the same way, if you have uh, ticked every single thing of that list for today, you're not adding anything to that list. That's very important. And, and having that list in front of you helps you uh, feel uh, that you have completed everything that you uh, plan to complete for that day. And then again, you can have some rest, you deserve it. So, uh, so this is another aspect of planning. So in any case, planning everything that you do, planning your short-term and long-term goals, there's absolutely no way uh, to succeed without planning, either professionally or as a student. Number four is create your work routine. And what I mean here, again, it does have to do a little bit with planning and does have to do a little bit with understanding your patterns and times of the day and all that. But what I mainly mean here is pretty much try to replicate something of a work routine. So I do that when I actually work. I, uh, but again, as I said, I'm, I'm self-employed, so I'm I'm independent and it would be very easy for me to get distracted and and to just stop working because there is nobody looking you know over my shoulders and and making sure that I'm working uh, if you're a student of course the problem is the same you you have to know how to have that self-control how to make sure that you are in fact studying when you you could for example just be uh, having good time and not studying. So to do that, to overcome that problem, I create this work routine. So I try to imagine as uh, uh, imagine a structure as if I was in an actual job. So for example, what time I start, what time I finish, what time I have my breaks. Uh, and this helps a lot. So I know when I will start work, I know when I can stop working. And again, this helps with that problem that I mentioned before, when you don't know when to stop. 
Uh, here you have specific time when you stop working or you may have time when you have your breaks or you may have time when every day you go for a walk or you go to bakery to the bakery to have some coffee and 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 something with that coffee so uh, it helps you again it would help you if you have that routine and you have your plan it helps you know that you're sticking to that plan and that routine so you're not just going somewhere to get distracted but it's actually your routine and something you do and you know you'll come back with that coffee and continue to work and finally although this may sound like a contradiction or maybe even it's a reflection a little manifestation of my problem with workaholism that i mentioned before but the final point is uh, try to do some work in your free time and i know this doesn't sound like uh, anything like what i said before but what i mean i don't mean to really work in all your free time but just sometimes it's more about again finding the patterns and times of the day sometimes there is uh, something that you do regularly when you're not doing anything but you could probably do something some of the uh, smaller easier tasks such as for example commuting to the university if you live in london or somewhere where uh, you're, you spend two hours on a train uh, to get to the university perhaps uh, again have this routine of doing one part of your your studies in that and that uh, that train on that train or maybe to just read some new articles to read three articles every day on the train or to to develop your plan for the week or if you're uh, if you're working if you're not a student then again i'm sure there are things that you could always do at specific time on the train or waiting for somebody or something or waiting in a car to pick up your kids from school it depends of course on your routines and your plans and again i know that i said and i still uh, suggest that you should have uh, some rest and some breaks and you should uh, know when to take time off work i'm just saying that sometimes you can uh, really become productive just by doing these little tasks now or in these times when you're not really active not really involved in anything and then having more time when you actually need it so this is it these are five things that help me be productive if uh, you enjoyed watching this video please like the video to help others find it and also feel free to comment ask me questions or ideally share your own strategies and your advice for how to be productive what you do to be productive.